I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'd like to welcome you to today's video. This one, we're going to start with a little bit of an STP review and take a look at a bit of a limitation on STP's part and how we can work around that. As you can see on one of our two switches, we've got the show interface trunk command already running. You can see we have two ports listed actually four times and this means that we've got two separate trunks between our two switches, switch one and switch two. So everything's fine right here and we'll go over to the other switch and run the same exact command. You can see it's ports 11 and 12. You could also see that they're connected with show CDP neighbor. So don't be thrown sometimes when you see the same device twice under device ID and show CDP neighbor because that just means you've got extra physical connections. So that's all fine because we want all the redundancy we can get. If one channel goes down between the two switches, if one of the trunks goes down, then we'll have the other one. But one limitation here is that when we have STP running, and we'll do that in just a moment, we've well, got the one VLAN running right now so you can see what we've got here. Here's FAST 011 and 012, our trunking ports. We can see that one of them is forwarding and one of them is blocking. So that's kind of a problem right there because while STP will put one of these ports into blocking mode to prevent switching loops from forming, the problem is that we're kind of wasting bandwidth there, right? In this particular case, We've got two separate connections between the, tr the switches, and we'd like to use them both. And we can do that with an ether channel. An ether channel is simply a logical bundling of multiple physical connections. We can put up to eight trunks into an ether channel, eight separate physical connections. We're, so we're going to put these two in one right now. Also note the cost here, the STP cost. That's based on speed. Let's watch and see if that changes as we progress through this lab. I'm going to use a little iOS help here. To show your choices, we create an ether channel with the channel group command. And I simply gave it a channel group number one. Then it's going to ask for the mode. If you're working on your CCNA, it might still might be a good idea to know the differences here between PAGP and LACP. If you're working on a more advanced certification CCMP or certainly your CCIE, you definitely need to know all about the differences between these two. We're not going to go into that on this lab because we're simply going to use the on option. And there we've got uh, interface port channel 1, change state to up, line protocol on interface port channel 1, state to up. Keep in mind, this is a logical creation here, our ether channel. So I just put 011 and 012 into the same ether channel. And we'll run show interface trunk very quickly. And you'll note that now we no longer see the individual ports. We now see PO1 for port channel 1. And we need to go over to the other router and do that, obviously. And we're all set. Again, I did that a little fast, but it's simply channel group one mode on, and you saw in iOS help uh, the different options for that. So let's run show interface trunk on this side. And you can see that everything looks good. So we've got our trunk created. One thing to watch here, uh, a little troubleshooting hint, because I get this occasionally, because uh, I allow students to do this on our live racks. And they create an ether channel. And I realize I'm a pretty fast typist. And not all of us in our business, of course, are. So if you kind of take your time about this, or maybe you're just kind of slowly typing it in, and you're finished, but you don't have the trunk up. The trunk's not working. What I would recommend you do is always check the individual ports. Now here, I've got show interface uh, uh, FAST 011, one of the ports we just put in, and it's up and the line protocol is up and it's connected. So that's perfectly fine. 
you definitely want to check each one of your ports though. If you see a message that a port has been error disabled or ERR disabled, what you need to do is just go ahead and finish your configuration and then shut and reopen those particular interfaces. We can see we've got quite a bit of uh, information here we can look at with the Ether channel. We're just going to go with the basics and you can see that we've got two ports in it. As I mentioned, max ports is eight. And for a basic Ether channel, that's really about it. Now let's go back to show spanning VLAN 1. And notice now that we no longer see the individual ports. We just see PO1 and it's in forwarding mode and the cost is lessened. That's because we're actually using both physical channels now where before we were not. And I'll do the same on VLAN 1 since that's where we looked at it earlier. And you can see now you don't see two individual ports here. You just see the port channel 1, the logical channel, and it's in forwarding mode and it's cost of 12 because again we're using all the available bandwidth. The great thing about an ether channel is that if one of the ports in it goes down, if one of the trunks goes down, like say I shut one of them, let's see what happens. I'll use the up arrow key there. So I've got a little bit of a problem there, but you notice it doesn't say anything about the ether channel going down. The ether channel is still up. So we don't have STP's little recalculations harming us there, or harming our communications between the two switches, but notice that the cost has gone back up. And once you repair the issue, which in this case is just me reopening that interface, we'll give that a moment for the console messages to come up. And you'll see in show spanning VLAN 1, just that quickly, that interface is already part of the Ether channel again, and you can see the lower cost. So nothing wrong with STP. We need it. But when we've got those multiple trunks up, we definitely want to use them in creating an Ether channel will help us do that. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I want to invite you to come out to www.thebryantadvantage.com. Over 250 free Cisco certification tutorials, videos, and practice exams. You can head straight for the tutorials page if you wish as well. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you at the website.